Father, in the name of Jesus. Hi, everyone. So I'm just trying this on YouTube instead of Zoom. Uh, let's just pray and start. We will read from Jeremiah 29. Uh, but let me just pray before that. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come in your presence. Speak to us through your word, O Lord. We thank you for this wonderful day, O Lord. And we know that you will speak into our hearts, O Lord, and change our situation. We come before you with thanksgiving, O Lord, knowing you are our Savior and that you have great plans for us, O Lord. And we look forward for you to unfold those plans into our lives, O oh Lord, and we trust our lives into your hands, in Jesus' name. So we're going to read from uh, Jeremiah chapter 29. We did it last week. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, where um, the Lord says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So this is a very, very uh, uh, nice Bible verse, but I just wanted to tell you the context in which the setting of this Bible verse, and I hope uh, you are able to hear clearly. If you're not able to hear clearly, please message me on uh, our group chat. Uh, so uh, this is a very, very nice Bible verse, and many people use it, but I thought it is very important uh, since we are picking on this great Bible verse, Bible promise that God has given us, which is, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you hope and a future. Um, so, uh, what is what was the Bible setting? What uh, Jeremiah uh, declared this word, uh, released this word, and what was the setting? Uh, what do I mean by setting? Setting is like, you know, when, when we are... Uh, the movie is being shot. It is winter time. So, you know, it's in the snow. But this setting for this Bible passage, this Bible promise from God came in a setting which was not really pleasant. The setting was that the people of God, the Jewish people were taken captive um, by the Babylonians. Another country had captured them and not they were taken into exile. What is exile? Exile is when people are taken away from their country to another country as a form of punishment or for some political reasons. And uh, this setting was very, very uh, pathetic because God's people were taken away by another country and forced to be in another country. They did not have their freedom. Their temple was destroyed, so they did not have a place to worship. And so their uh, condition was hopeless. Uh, their situation was hopeless. And at that time, God released a word. This is the promise that God released through prophet Jeremiah saying, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. And now God is saying, I have a plan for you. But what is the situation of the people? It was pathetic situation. Why? Because people had sinned and continuously God's people had sinned and God was angry and God had just moved away and allowed the Babylonians, another country, to take his people into exile. And they were into exile and they were crying and they were in a hopeless situation looking for God, looking for an answer, looking for a solution. Yet God was watching them. And God said this, and uh, for us to understand, uh, we are getting somewhere. For us to understand, we will all read together um, Jeremiah chapter 29, from verses uh, 4, chapter 29, verses 4 to, uh, I think I'll go on till 11. Uh, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says to all those I carried, I carried, God carried them into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity for the city in which you are. Uh, pray to the Lord for that city because if that city prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. And then God says, first God says, there is... 
uh, I'm not coming soon. I'm not sending you a solution soon. It's going to take as long as 70 years. So you can have your plans while you are in captivity, while you are in another land, while you are suffering. So just get married, you know, plant uh, crops and grow your businesses there. Do whatever you want to do, but you are not, uh, I am not sending my solution. And it is going to take as long as 70 years and people were suffering where there was no temple, where God, their God was not with them. They were not in peace. They were not in happiness. And God was watching them. And then God says, For I know the plans I have for you. This is what he says. I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. So people at that point of time in this setting, people were struggling, suffering, uh, crying. Yet God said, I'm not sending a solution right away. And then after 70 years, what God promised, I have plans to prosper you enough to harm you. Then uh, I have plans to give you a future, to give you hope. And that hope God sent. Every time God sent hope, every time God sent a solution, God always raised a leader. And in this case, it was God touched the heart of uh, a Persian leader called Cyrus the Great and raised another leader called Zerubbabel and brought the people back to their place. And then they started rebuilding the temple. Where, why did they rebuild the temple? Because why did they need a temple? Because they need to, they needed to get rid of their sin, repent for their sin, ask God's help. They needed God's guidance. They needed God's leading. They needed God's presence. For that, the temple which was destroyed, uh, God commissioned uh, Cyrus the Great and Zerubbabel to rebuild the temple. But that was a temporary plan, a smaller plan. And the bigger plan that God brought in wonderfully for his people who suffered and God waited because they were continuously getting into sin. And God just stepped back and said, I'm not sending a solution soon. And it took them as long as 70 years. God gave them uh, a leader, touched a leader, commissioned a leader to uh, take them back to their country, God's country, God, uh, where they belonged. And then God commissioned them to rebuild the temple. But that was only a smaller plan. The greater plan that God released was when Jesus Christ was sent on earth. Like I said, every time God helped his people, rescued his people, he always raised a good leader. And in this case, Jesus Christ was the leader, the head of the church. But this leader was so unique and so wonderful that he himself became the sin for the people because every time people were getting into sin, every time they were displeasing God and God was stepping back from them and then they were suffering and then an enemy would attack them. So then the ultimate plan God released was Jesus Christ. He raised a leader. He was not just a leader. He was a teacher. He himself became the sin. How did he become the sin? He became the sin for people because he died on the cross. Because in those days, a sinner would be, uh, would be hung on the cross. The one who was cursed would be hung on the cross. And he himself became that sin. He himself became the sacrifice. Earlier, people would have to sacrifice with a lamb, a spotless lamb. Jesus himself was the leader. He became the sin and he became the sacrifice. And he set his people free. So this was the solution, the permanent solution that God sent to his people. So that every time they sin and people do uh, fall tem uh, to temptation, they, they do get attracted by sin. And every time people uh, got tempted towards sin, God made a permanent solution that we come through Jesus. We come to Jesus and to, we come to God through Jesus and not on our own. So, I don't know. Uh, and there is one word that I want to say. If uh, there has been any kind of sin in your life, uh, any kind of situation, any kind of problem, any kind of wrong that you have done. Today, what we are going to do is we are going to look. 
to that great plan that God himself has released, not just easily, but after waiting, after thoughtfully uh, uh, planning. This was God's plan for us. Jesus Christ was God's plan for us so that every time we are doing something wrong, we come through him and God does not step back from our life, from our situation, but God is still there because when God sees us through Jesus, God looks at Jesus Christ and knows that he himself became the sin. He himself became the sacrifice. Okay. And I just have uh, three things. If you are going through, uh, if you have been into sin, if you got tempted towards any kind of sin, if you, any of you, if you are in a kind of situation that gets repeated uh, every now and then and you know that you know this uh, situation is not a right situation it gets repeated every now and then you you can sense the evil in that situation so whether you have done something wrong whether you are in sin or whether you temporarily gave in to sin or you are in a situation that is bad and you want to get out of it one is uh, we are going to acknowledge that, yes, Lord, I have been into sin. I have given into sin or I have done something wrong. Acknowledge. Without acknowledging, uh, the solution will not come to us. And if it is a situation, you need to acknowledge that, yes, Lord, I am in a situation and I want to get out of this situation. Number two, number one is acknowledge it. Number two, repent and tell the Lord, Jesus is with you. Like I said, Jesus is the permanent solution that God has sent for you to get out, to get you out of that uh, solution, to, to get you out of that situation. Remember in the past, like I said, the solution was not released. It took them, it took God as long as 70 years, but then God released and now we have it. So we are the blessed people because we have God's permanent solution to get out of that situation, to get out of that evil, to get out of that sin, to get out of the wrong that we have done without feeling condemned, without feeling bitter. And bitterness is one word that I wanted to stress upon today. If you are feeling bitter about whether you have done something or whether life has thrown something at you or whether somebody has done something, no matter how much you fight, you are fighting in vain because your fight is not with yourself because you made a mistake, nor with others because they hurt you, or nor with life because life has been unfair to you. But your fight is, you know, it, your fight is with the enemy, that is Satan himself. And for this fight, you will need Jesus. Only with Jesus can you fight that enemy and get out of that sin, get out of the wrongs, get out of the situation that you are in. Number one is acknowledge the problem, the situation, the sin or the temptation that you gave into. Two, uh, repent and ask the Lord, Lord, I need your help, Lord Jesus. Uh, I do not want to be in this situation or I do not want to be in this sin. I do not want to be in this condition. I do not want to be in this sickness. And number three is, I have made a note, believe that Jesus Christ is the permanent solution that very God gave it a thought that people every now and then were getting into situation. Every now and then they were getting into sin and they were displacing God. And they were crying and they were suffering. So this was a permanent solution. Number three, you need to believe because the Bible says, even if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, if you have that much faith, you can move mountains. And today, if you can just gather that much faith and say, yes, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the permanent solution for my problem, permanent solution for my situation, and the Lord will get you out of it. Amen. So. You just have to look to the Lord. Like I said, if you have bitterness, any kind of bitterness towards others, today is the day where you will just submit it to Jesus because your fight is not with you. Your fight is not with life. Your fight is not with situation. Your, your fight is not with any person because the Bible says we do not fight. We do not wrestle with flesh and blood. And today we are going to trust God. We are going to admit our fault. We are going to admit our situation and we are going to ask the Lord Jesus to get us out of this, this situation, out of that sin, out of that temptation, once and for all. 
And if you will just believe, the third point, my third point, if you will just believe today with the very little faith also that you can gather for yourself, that Jesus Christ is the permanent solution that God has carefully and thoughtfully sent to us, released to us, that we are the blessed generation because a permanent solution has already come to us from God, you will definitely see the change. Let us pray. If you have believed that, you have acknowledged it. One is, I'm asking again, acknowledge, admit your fault, your wrong, your situation. Two, ask the Lord, get me out of this. I do not want to be in this. Because every time there is wrong, there is sin, Satan will try to trap you into it and uh, will deceive you and take you away from God's plan. Number three, believe that yes, in Jesus, there is solution for you, a permanent solution for you, and he will get you out of it. And believe that God has sent you this plan. God has a plan for you, that your temporary plans uh, your plans are smaller compared to the plan that God has for you. What is God's plan for you? I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So what is that plan? Jesus Christ is that plan. Now you will say, how is Jesus Christ the plan? For example, you are looking for a job. And if I tell you, no, Jesus Christ is that plan. It will not make sense to you. But your job, for your, your job is the smaller plan. Though it looks like a bigger plan to you, but the bigger plan is Jesus Christ. And in Jesus Christ is wrapped that smaller plan. In, in this case, your job. So if it's your healing, your healing is wrapped in that great plan that God has released. Your healing is wrapped in Jesus Christ. Only if you will take time to believe and ask and seek him. This is what God said. I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you. And then you will pray to me and then you will seek me from your heart. Today, if you will seek him from your heart, you will find your plan wrapped inside God's great plan. That is Jesus Christ. So we are going to believe that God has a great plan for us. Great plan to keep us safe, protected, to give us healing, uh, to keep us happy, to uh also our ambition, our plans that we have for the future. If you will believe today, and if you will seek today that plan for your life that God has for you and believe in Jesus Christ, today will be that day where God will begin to unfold that plan to you. Your eyes, spiritual eyes will start opening and you will know that you are already, if you are focusing on Jesus, if you are believing in Jesus, that you are already in God's plan. Let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone who's watching, Lord, we come in your presence and we believe that you waited for as long as 70 years to fulfill this promise, which you said through prophet Jeremiah, saying, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Lord, we trust your plan. And Lord, we surrender every sin, every situation that is hurtful before you, every wrong that we have done, knowingly or unknowingly, we submit it before you. Lord, we want to get out of it. We do not want to dwell inside of it. We do not want to keep this sin. We do not want to give in to this temptation continuously. We do not want to displease you continuously, but we want to get out of it. We do not want to be into this situation, O Lord, that has been pulling us down, that has been discouraging us, that has not brought us any fulfillment. Lord, today we submit this situation, this wrongs, this sin before you on everybody's behalf. Lord, I bring it before you. I submit it before you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, today we believe that you are that plan, Jesus Christ. You are the plan that God released very carefully and thoughtfully towards us. And today, open our spiritual eyes, O oh Lord, to see that we are in a situation and that you are getting us out of it. That we will no more be in this situation. Lord, we release ourselves. Lord, we release our hurts. Lord, we release our needs this, in this situation. And we trust you, Lord, that you are sovereign God, that your word 
is true, O Lord, that heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall not pass away. Then what you say you will do in our lives, O Lord, when you say Jesus Christ is that plan for our lives, O Lord. Through him we will fight every battle that life has thrown at us. We will not fight people, but we will fight Satan through you, Lord Jesus, because you are that plan in our life, O Lord. Help us to stay grounded in you, O Lord. Help us to come closer to the Father through you, Lord Jesus, because you became our sin. You became our sacrifice. You became our leader. You became our teacher. You became that word, O Lord, that promise of God, O Lord. Today, we trust in you, Lord that you will not keep us in this situation, but you will get us out of it, O oh Lord. And th that today onwards you will unravel, you will release, unfold that plan that God has for our life. And you will get us out of this situation, O oh Lord. No matter what it is, we come against every spirit of sin, every spirit of uh, temptation, every situation that brings harassment, every situation that brings tears, every situation that brings hopelessness, every bitterness inside of us. Everyone who's watching right now, every bitterness inside of them, Lord Jesus. Let your love move through every heart, O Lord. Let your power move, O Lord. Let your plan, O Lord, begin to unfold in each of their lives, O Lord. And may they get out of that situation, O Lord. May their eyes be, be wiped, O Lord. Those tears be wiped by your hand, O Lord. May you protect them, O Lord, by your precious blood. May they come through you, O Lord, knowing that you have already paid a price for their sin and that you already have paid a price as a sacrifice. And Lord, today we trust you that you are going to do something new, O Lord. Break every bondage of Satan upon their lives, O Lord. Break every bitterness, O Lord. Break every uh, fault finding, O Lord. Break every t uh, tear, uh, things that bring in tears into their eyes, O Lord. Break every suffering, O Lord. Break every temptation, O Lord. Break every spirit of sin that makes them go to works, the things that you do not want them to do. And Lord, we trust you, Lord Jesus. Come into their lives, O Lord. And be present for them, O Lord. Stand in the gap for them, O Lord. And set them free, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you. And know that God will uh, uh, unfold that plan into your life. God has a great plan for your life. And he will release it to you. He will, step by step, you will start seeing that, yes, God definitely has a bigger plan for my life. Uh, God bless you. And we'll catch up later. In Jesus' name.